This is Wholesaling Houses Elite, the no fluff and BS podcast with tips and tricks to help you become an elite wholesaler. Our guest will spill the beans on what it takes to be the best. This podcast is brought to you by Lead Gen Pros, making it incredibly easy for the average real estate investor and business owner to get more leads. They work with a variety of companies who specialize in real estate investing and who are looking for a systemized way to increase their lead flow and grow their business. If that sounds like you, check out theleadgenpros.com. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Max Maxwell with another podcast here. And yes, we're back. I'm finally back. After the conference, a long, long planning time and long we're here we're back the crew's back we're in town and uh, i have a special guest with me and i know i say that every time but i really have a special guest with me this is a guy i really don't talk much about i talk to him a lot but i don't talk about him much um his name is justin aka the data guy the data scientist the mad scientist he knows it all type of guy he's very smart way smarter than me and if you're smart like me you hang around people that are smarter than you so, uh, Justin, welcome to the Wholesale Elite Podcast. How you doing? I'm doing awesome, man. Thanks for inviting me. So, I, you're behind the scenes. You've been behind the scenes for a while. Um, but I wanted to do a fair introduction to the audience of who you are. And I'll kind of say, like, who you are to me. He's my mad scientist. When I come up with an idea or when we spitball ideas back and forth, he's the one who actually makes these uh, things work that, like, kind of automate my business. Um T- kind of take the brain idea and make it into something. So, but before we get to that, kind of give your start of to where, how you got started into the REI world or in your background period. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, um, I've done a bunch of stuff, you know, Me too. and, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, just as a kid playing around programming, I had two loves programming and real estate. Now, when you say programming, you talking about like programming the VCR remote. <laughs> to the th- <laughs> yeah, that's what, hey, look, when I come home, everybody's like, my family, hey, Justin, can you fix the TV? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you talk about that type of program, no, I'm, I'm not you. talking about that type oh, of program. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I would actually create programs, like uh, software programs. And I started when I was young, like 10 years old. Okay. And uh, my mom and my dad saved up, got me a, uh, you know, kind of dating myself, a Commodore 64. And yeah. that's sort of what uh, I started on. I don't know idea what that is. Is that a computer? <laughs> exactly. Okay. Yeah. So, mom and dad got him a computer, guys. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so I started on that as a kid. And um, and then my mom and my dad also had a passion for real estate. Okay. So, uh, you know, Carlton Sheets, my dad would. The uh, legend. Yeah. My dad had a copy of his course and I would steal it and listen to it all the time. My mom and I would go visit model homes and dream of living in these big, beautiful homes. Yeah. You know, when I was a kid and, uh, you know, that as an adult. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So we were, we were, uh, you know, I knew all the builders by the time I was like 10, 11, I knew K hop Navy and toll brothers and you name it, you You know, I knew them guys. So those are my two passions, my whole life, real estate and technology. And, um, when, uh, I got a little bit older, I got into mortgages you know, okay. And I realized that I love the um, the financial side, the, the the solution, the creativity side yeah. of actually putting deals together. So I had been flipping some homes on the side. I also was working as a technology consultant for like one of the big six firms at the time mm-hmm. after I got out of college. And I started just flipping properties on the side. And um, did, you, what, did you always have success or did, was it a learning curve for you? Um, it was a bit of a learning curve. I mean, luckily, I was partnered up with a buddy of mine okay. who knew the game really well. So uh, I didn't really make a ton of mistakes. Most of the mistakes came with the mortgage business. Yeah. And um, we grew the mortgage operation really, really fast. We grew to about 85 employees. Wow. And had, um, you know, we were doing hard money. We were flipping. But our primary business was, you know, running the mortgage operation. Is this when everybody can get a mortgage? Was this was when everybody can get a mortgage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I got one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> At 21. <laughs> And um, so we weren't necessarily doing the type of mortgages that everybody was talking about in the news. You know, Uh, we were doing good mortgages. That's not what took us out of the business. What took us out of the business was just everybody. Money kind of went dry. Mm -hmm. Like there was no, you know, at the time that the term was, there was no liquidity in the market. Mm -hmm. And where we made money, we were lenders. Um, I couldn't really sell the mortgages because basically, you know, everyone on Wall Street was closing up shop. Yeah. So that was what I did. I ran um, 
underwriting. I, I uh, would sell the mortgages and kind of wrap them and sell them to the, the Wall Street guys. Mm -hmm. And so when that went all went away, we kind of lost that business and I went back into technology. Um, so I would say by that point in my career, I had probably either underwritten or participated in or personally flipped over a thousand deals at wow. that point in my life. Um, so you've been, so at that point now you're already part of real estate. You're embedded into it from the mortgage side, from the investment side, from the flipping side. Yeah. You now understand it completely. And obviously you understand technology completely. So when that dried up, what, what was next for you? So the next piece was consulting because... I really wanted to focus on technology and then sort of taking what I've learned. What I realized was real estate specifically had no good software. There just wasn't good technology. 100%. Um, the technology was mostly in, you know, other industries where they would get, um, you know, a high level of service, the type of software that I thought REI deserved. Mm -hmm. So I made it my mission, to, you know, along with uh, my business partner, Vince, and, and you, um, to really go after creating beautiful products for yeah. REI. Why is it that software didn't hit the real estate world? And even as an agent, when I was much younger, um, why, why wasn't it? And it's such a big part of the economy, the, the GDP. Why is yeah. it that, that, that there was no, you know, I, I you know, it's an interesting thing. I, I, and Vince probably could even give you a, uh, much more detailed response than, than I could uh, because of his background. But most of the money went into the retail markets. Mm -hmm. So obviously, you know, realtors themselves, they've got beautiful products. Yeah. Right. So they mostly would focus on the retail side. I think because the, uh, the, the, the wholesale, the discount property market, you know, or investor market just uh, was relatively unknown. And I also think that there is a, um, it just didn't, I don't think it was as sexy. Correct. To, to it's, a, it's a hands dirty type. Yeah, of it's a, thinking. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Right. So, um, but I've always loved it. I grew up in the type of neighborhood where, um, even now, my neighborhood in New Jersey, where I grew up, is becoming like one of the hottest markets where people are trying to flip properties in my hometown. Um, so, what, what hometown is that? Willingboro, New Jersey. Willingboro is that? Is that South Jersey? Or? South Jersey. Yeah, Exit Five. <laughs> Just outside Philadelphia area. I know exactly where that is. There you is. go. I'm lying. No. <laughs> but I know South Jersey and I know that it is crazy hot out there right now and yeah. people are flipping and you know, cause you got uh what do you call it? Central Jersey, is that what you would call it? Or is it all just south and north? Yeah, there's yeah, North Jersey, Central Jersey, <clears throat> South Jersey. That's expensive. North Jersey it gets really expensive. Um Central Jersey less, South Jersey is fairly Very inexpensive, yeah. right? And that's why a lot of folks are focused in my town. Because you can actually get properties for less than a hundred grand. So some North Carolina prices, mm -hmm. but the taxes are insane. Right? Yeah, you're paying six thousand to eight thousand dollars a year for Why? a twenty-two hundred square foot. Home. It's crazy. Maybe not even twenty-two hundred square feet. Maybe more like thirteen, fourteen hundred square feet. You're paying like six grand a year. Amazing. Yeah. So you are now flipping business is done, dried up. You you're doing that stuff, and now you're out to an agenda where you're like, listen, I need to, or I want to create software for the right. industry that makes sense. Where, where did that lead you to? So in order for me to actually create products that would help turn businesses around, I had to actually go work for businesses and help turn them around. Mm -hmm. So it led me to working with people like, you know, Brad Chandler over at mm -hmm. Express Home Buyers. Yeah, big guy. Mm -hmm. Working with you. Um, a few other investors who probably wouldn't want me to mention their names because I typically was the behind the scenes guy. Yeah. And at the same time I was studying data science. So I would come in and, and help just automate, create automation throughout the entire practice, use my knowledge that I had um, with how to actually, you know, underwrite properties and, and sort of help, you know, scale that practice up and, and kind of help get that practice, uh, you know, to the next level. Now I needed to focus on lead generation, mm -hmm. right? And so, mm -hmm a lot of the strategies that I learned that really worked from, you know, direct mail to, you know, RVM to cold calling and what the various um, ways that different shops were doing it. I wanted to put that in the software so that we could offer it to, you know, to the masses, to the masses. Yeah. Now, question when you say, cause I want to go back, you talk about automation, like explain what you mean by automation, because it can mean so many things, but in the REI world, what do you consider automation like give an example and then why it's important yeah so i mean if you just want to be effective i mean especially if you're a smaller shop one folk you know one person shop you know or two folks you got a teammate 
And, uh, and a lot of people just have a full-time job, mm-hmm. right? And so they need the ability for their business to, to still operate when they're at work. Correct. You know, so that's what I mean by automation, like just processes working, things running while you don't have to, you know, it, you don't have to really worry about. So it's, some, it's like repetitive things that can be done over and over again by yeah, not a human. Exactly. And you talk about this all the time, you know, um, in your videos, which is, you know, focus on the areas where you're successful and focus on the areas where you love and the things that are holding you back. Mm-hmm. You need to automate those. Right. Or find a, you know, another form of automation is a VA, right? Like that's not you doing something. So it's not computer automation, but it is process automation. Correct. Right. So I focus on process automation and to the extent that I can provide a computer based or software based, you know, I'm going to do that. But if it doesn't exist and, and we can stick a human in there and that makes the most sense. So really it's about designing um, a process around a specific set of skills, like where you're fantastic. Mm-hmm. Like everybody knows Max Maxwell, is probably the best person there is in REI on the phone, right? Hands down, nobody can beat you. I've been in tons of shops. And so if I were to come in and like we did, right, where would we focus on your business? And it should be around the phones, mm-hmm. right? Where you're amazing. And those areas where um, other areas that where you want to, uh, where you don't necessarily need to focus and we could get somebody else in, then we would say either, hey, let's write a program and create or find one that exists or <clears> hire <throat> a VA. Let's, let's get that piece automated in some way. Yeah. I mean, that makes perfect sense. And, you know, now to where we're currently in the story where we started off is, when I had a problem with the phone system and not really a problem, but something that wasn't necessarily scalable and I wanted to reach so many people, right? My goal was when I started was to reach $100,000 a month. And in order to do that, I myself couldn't do it, right? So I brought on remote employees or VAs, whatever you want to call them. And we had people do things that I wasn't good at, some admin work, answering the phones, but I wanted to reach people to the mass. And that's when I discovered RVM but there was something about RVM that was not good because it just wasn't intelligent. It was, and for those of you that don't know RVM, it's ringless voicemail and kind of explain that technology because I think a lot of people are confused. A lot, there's a lot of white smoke or white noise going on in this industry when it comes to a lot of these tools that you can have. And a lot of people only talk about these things so they can sell them or create these things. But talk about RVMs and what it, what it essentially is from a, from a tech standpoint. Yeah, I mean, from a technology perspective, it really is um, just a server to server communication Mm -hmm. that basically drops a voicemail in someone's phone account, Mm -hmm. inside their account. So when they look at their phone, they see a voicemail and a missed call, right? Mm -hmm. Typically they'll see a missed call. Yeah. Um, And then, but the phone would never have rung, right? And so there's technology that exists that I can leave a voicemail message for someone without having to actually ring their phone. Mm Right. So then I don't necessarily have to have that conversation. Then they can, you know, listen to that message at their leisure. Ideally, it will pre-qualify them so Correct. that when they call back, hopefully only interested people are calling back. So and that's the that's the, the, the that's the simple know. way of saying it. And I like it because it turns an outbound marketing effort into an inbound marketing. Yeah. And it allows my team to talk to more qualified people. Now you do get the people that call back that just see the missed call and hit them. The, that you're going to get that. I mean, that's just human nature, right? Yeah. Like, I don't do that. Yeah, I'm not calling you back if I don't know who you are. Right. Um, but people listen to voicemails and they say, "Okay, well, maybe they're talking about my house on One Two Three Main Street." Now another problem I had when I was doing RVMs and I was using many other services out there, it was just they literally just sent an RVM. That's right. all it did. You uploaded yeah. an Excel sheet and it sent an RVM. And when I got that call back from the actual person. I had no idea what property, I had no idea who I was speaking to. It was essentially a blind call, which was basically creating another outbound version of, at least on an outbound, I knew who I was calling. Right. So now when I get the phone call, the old age old line, when I first got in this business, and it hadn't even been that long ago, two two and a half years ago, that it's basically saying, hey, I'm not in front of my computer right now. Mm -hmm. Um, Can you tell me what property you're calling about? And right there, you're gonna get two responses. One, somebody's gonna go ahead and give you that information. And second, they might give you that information, but they're gonna become tighter. You lose that trust factor. That's right. Because what we try to 
when we want to talk to somebody, we will basically want to say, listen, I've only called you. Mm -hmm. I didn't call 10,000 other people. That's right. So you want to have that intimate, like, oh, Jimmy, yeah, yeah. I'm calling you about 123 Main Street. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. versus, hey, hey, uh, who's this? Or, hey, I'm not in front of my computer. Can you tell me what property you're calling about? And that was one thing I really, really hated with the RVM systems that are just out there that just do RVMs. Yeah. So when I told you my frustrations, you then created something that was way more intelligent and moved forward. So tell me about, you, you, we created REI Rail, right. which is a, a ringless voicemail system. But not only that, we solved a lot of issues that we were having internally with my sure. team. It was never, actually, it didn't even have a name. When we created this, it was not a product to put mm -hmm. out to the public. It was just to solve an internal problem. That's right. And I didn't care what it cost because I knew that if I got it correct, that it would bring crazy ROI. So kind of talk about the problems you solved and how you solved them. Sure, yeah. So, um, you know, and it, REI Rail, as you said, solves that primary issue that you had, right? Which is, you know, if I'm sending out RVMs, okay, so, and that's, I'm, I record a message one time and I can send it out to a million people if I want to, and they can all hear that same message. Um, when that message comes back, and when I answer that phone, or when you answer that phone, or someone in, on your team answers that phone, before they had no idea who that person was, right. and they were, you know, fumbling on the phone, trying to figure out, you know, quickly, and especially if you're calling an absentee list, that's where it really mattered, right? Because, and and we in REI know absentee lists are awesome because sometimes that could lead to seven deals. Like you heard Ricky Day at you know mm -hmm. uh, We Live 19. He said, I talked to somebody and they actually had seven deals and that was on an absentee owner list. So you don't want to screw those calls up. No. But because those folks own multiple properties, a lot of times they're going to say, well, what property did you call me about? Uh, yeah, and you, right. And so- and When if you're you not, own, right. round seven. Exactly. <laughs> and, and some of these folks are savvy. So they're going to say, wait a minute, you called me and you don't know what property you called me about. They expect, number one, that you even have their phone number. So they're going to think- Now it just becomes a sketchy conversation. Now right? it becomes a sketchy, sketchy conversation because they're going to say, not only do you have my phone number, you should know exactly what property you're calling me about. Don't you have all this data on me? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So if you're not able to sort of, you know, deal with that objection immediately and build that rapport quickly, you're, you're a scam. That's how they're going to view 100%. you. You know what I mean? So how do we solve that? I mean, so we use technology. We used advanced technology. We created something called Deep Trace that basically um, pulls in all the data at one time, the instant that somebody calls in. So we tell you everything about who's on the other end of that line. But even um, in addition to that, we tell you exactly what property you marketed to, what list they were part of, if they were part of your absentee list or your D4D list or mm -hmm. your probate list. So you can quickly identify how you're supposed to shape your conversation. Because if it's a probate list, you're not gonna talk to them the same as you would someone on an absentee list. Yeah, and it was crazy the first time that you brought that you had the ability to maybe build something like this. I was like, it just can't be possible because essentially I'm sitting in front of my computer, the phone doesn't even ring yet, and there's an alert on my computer that right. Bob is calling from 123 Main Street, and I have everything about Bob before my phone even starts to ring. Right. And then as it rings, I click the lead, and then I have everything about Bob. And I right. say, hey, Bob, yeah. this is uh, Max calling. I'm calling about the house on 123 Main Street. Prior to that, it was, I don't know who's calling, yeah. and I don't know what house they're calling about. So now what we did is we hacked that trust equation. That's Vince right. talks about it a lot, but we hacked that trust equation to where now it's, I, I know I'm a, I'm a local guy calling another local guy about a property that right. they own. I know who they are and what property. So I'm literally not saying, hey, I know we all get those calls. Hey, we're here to lower your credit card debt. Exactly. I don't yeah. even have a credit card. What are you talking exactly. about, bro? Yeah. So you want to not be the scam. And when just that alone made me throw yeah. my hands up and say, wow. Right. So the scam piece, like that should be a non-issue in my mind, right? Mm -hmm. Like why would we even have to have that as a thing, right? Mm -hmm. Let's just get rid of that. And that's what REI Real does. Then the next thing we need to do is amplify. So my job is as a consultant, as a data miner or data scientist and, and you know, just anyone who comes into a practice and wants to turn it up is to amplify it. So I thought in my mind, and Vince and I would go back, you know, and talk, we need to amplify Max's ability, mm -hmm. right? So that when he answers that phone, now you can also ask those probing questions because we also know sometimes these lists aren't correct. Mm 
Correct. Right. The person that is in that, you know, who's listed as the owner in your spreadsheet that you bought from wherever isn't necessarily, you know, the latest information or maybe it just changed last week. Who knows? You know, um, but the point is, is that when you have that conversation, now you can even ask, well, if you don't know who owns this property, it's just if it's not the property owner, do you know who it is? Yeah. Or the other thing that the um, deep trace tells you is relatives. Mm -hmm. Right. So most of us are investing in our local markets. Right. So you focus in Winston Salem. So how many times deep trace come back and you look in that list of relatives and you saw someone maybe you went to high school with or you Part saw it, somebody yeah. right who, you know, yeah. you know, some way through some degree of separation that you could spark a conversation. Right. And say, oh, wait a minute. Do you know so and so? Yep. Right. And then the minute that you build that familiarity, the, the guards come down, the guards come down and either a you're going to get that pro that that property, but even more, if you don't get that property, they're going to talk about you mm -hmm. to their neighbors and say, I just talked to this wonderful guy, Max Maxwell. He's buying properties in the neighborhood. Your name starts to get out there. You start building that local brand. So the best leads you can get. Exactly. So it's, it's more of, so it's not just solving that immediate issue. It really is designed to solve even creating your brand over time to give you that professional edge over everybody else in your, in your, um, and, you know, in your area. And that's why I love it. So make sure you guys check out, um, reirail.com to kind of see what we're talking about and look at some of the things in detail. But I, I want to move on because I call you the data scientist and you got many other names, but <laughs> tell me why, <laughs> tell me why data is so important in this business. Um, it's 2019. <laughs> That's true. Let me check. <laughs> That's yes, right. you're right. You're right. Yeah. And, uh, data is, um, a differentiator. I mean, there's two things to me that make it, and again, it's about amplification, right? Mm -hmm. Which is you have this incredible skill that we want to make better, but we can make it better also through data, through machine learning, through, you know, all of the things that we're hearing about artificial intelligence. Now that sometimes seems to people like a, a bit of an abstract concept. What does that really mean? Machine learning? What does artificial intelligence really mean to me? How does it help me grow? Right. And so I don't want people to even have to think about it or worry about it. We're going to handle all of that. Really what matters is I'm going to give you the data that you need in order to get to the point of decision making and or um, sale that you need to make as quickly as you need to make it quick. So, key. right. So the difference is, as we all know, like if you're buying a lead list and I buy a lead list that tells me every, all these homes are vacant and only 15 of them are vacant. And I'm calling up people saying, hey, I'm calling about your vacant property. And they're like, well, what are you talking about? Because I ain't got no vacant Because I don't have a vacant property, right? So, you know, now the guy who has the right list, that's right 80% of the time, mm -hmm. has five times the amount of conversations that you have. And we all know this is a numbers game, especially with sales, right? Yeah. So hack the trust equation, right? And then the next step is now we need to increase how many times you're touching the right lead the at the person. right time, yeah. right? And so that's what good data gives you. Good data gives you the ability to identify those leads at the right time, the good data, you know what I mean? So that's what we focus on. We created methods and ways of sort of taking even just a regular lead list that you would purchase off of say lead source or wherever, and then running that against our algorithms to pick out what's best. Yeah. Right now that's something we don't offer to consumers. That's only something we offer to, you know, in, like in-house. In yeah. But, um, but we, but we're building these things, we're testing them so that we can kind of give them out to people eventually after we prove that it works. And the reason why it's important because my staff has to reach a certain amount of people a day. It's a standard in my company. It's what you have to do every yeah. single day, five days a week. So for me to maximize my dollar spend, right? Cause they're on salary plus bonuses. I need to make sure that I am putting the right numbers in front of them from the beginning right. to give them a better chance to talk to more people, to close more deals. Because if I keep giving them bad data, they're going to go work somewhere else. That's right. Right. And not only that, I'm going to burn my own money. I'm literally burning my money. So that's why working with you is so important because I'm eliminating what's not working up front. I'm that's eliminating right. what's not going to be right. So that I don't waste time and have these people call because they're only going to work eight to nine hours a day. That's right. So I need, I, and if I want to close 12, 14, 15 deals a month, I need to be putting the correct data in front of them. Yeah. And I can't wait to get this sort of thing out to even the people who are part-time in their jobs, mm -hmm. you know, or full-time and doing this part-time because that's where it's really going to matter because their time is Maximize. extraordinarily valuable. Exactly. I'm working all day. I get off of work. I'm sitting two, in an hour, hours. two hour commute. Mm -hmm. I got to get home, 
you know, make dinner for the kids, take them to soccer practice. Like, how much time do you have between uh, work, family? minutes an hour. Right. I put in. Exactly. It's and a cold call, at least. Exactly. So for those folks, data really matters. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, that really is where um, artificial intelligence and machine learning matters, because for me, it's always been about improving people's lives, yeah. getting them out of the situation that they're in. Solving problems. Solving problems. And if we can use data to get people out of their current situation so that they spend less time dealing with you know, bad leads or bad data, and we can get them out of their situations faster with good leads and good data, that's what we want to do. Now, what do you, now before, I, before I get to the next part, a lot of people know that I've had many businesses in the past. I'm an entrepreneur. One business I don't really talk about a lot, but that I had was a bail bonding company. I had one of the best bail bonding companies in the state of North Carolina. Um, one thing our bail bonding company was real good at was fugitive recovery. We had what we call North Carolina uh, Task Fugitive Recovery Task Force. And we had uh, ex-military guys like myself. We would go out and find fugitives for uh, bond companies. And one thing we got really, really good at was finding individuals that did not want to be found. Mm. And that was how I kind of hacked getting into the REI world where I could find people that necessarily would not be found, wanted yeah. to be found. And those are people such as people that are avoiding phone calls from pre foreclosures, tax list, um, people that could be wealthy, that inherit property, people that just all types of people. There's people that make it a point not to be contacted. Um, so with doing that, skip tracing, that word came from the industry of private investigator and bondsman. And what that means is what happens is when you don't go to court, you're called a skip. You skipped court. And what we do is we have to skip a trace. We, we trace a skip. Mm -hmm. So that's where the word skip tracing came from. So when you skip court, we call you a skipper. Right. A bail jumper. And we have to track you down. And these people are purposely do not want to be found. Um, so using software and technology, we knew how that, that was available to us as bondsmen, we knew the genetics and the makeup of what good things look like. Yeah. And when we created REI Rail, we wanted to make sure data was king. Right. So we might provide you with the side of actually calling people, but the, we, we found out in the beginning that a lot of the data that they were getting was terrible. That's right. So yeah. we came together and we bought REI Skip yeah. And REI Skip was a great company before it was leading. It was actually one of the first batch skip tracing companies in the REI industry. I think it they, was the first. Yeah, it was the first. And what happened was they were actually, it was a division of a company that worked strictly with bondsmen that drafted, came into the REI world. And we bought that armor, their company, and we developed it even better with some of your, your market, your, your, your um, developing background mm -hmm. and my knowledge of what we used to use in the private investigator developer field to find people. And, you know, we came up with the triangular data and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But let's go back to the basics because skip tracing has become something that almost irritates me now <laughs> when I hear about yeah. it, when I hear people talking about how many numbers did you get back? What's the accuracy of the percentage? And I want people to understand volume of numbers does not really equal accuracy. There's mm -hmm. a two different things, right? But beyond that, what is skip tracing data and why is it important? And, and, and just break it down for the simplest, the simplest of people. What is it? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's basically what you just said. It's the ability to take a property address mm -hmm. and tell you who the owner is, mm -hmm. tell you what their mobile phone number is so that you can contact them and ask questions about the property and hopefully, you know, get that property under contract. So as, as a former bondsman, um, what do you, all these, where do these data points come from? It's really a couple big places that you can get data from. Yeah, there's only a few major places that offer it, um, you know, and everyone knows, you know, LexisNexis, TLO. Places um, that you can't even get. Yeah, they're, they're, you, you can't really, as a single person, it, it's, you got to jump through hoops, you got to give them your first child if you, yeah. you want to get an account and with them. And promise them a second one. Know. And so putting all that data together, it's, is that it's there, but what you created on top of the knowledge that I gave you on how we did it in the bond industry, you created this AI essentially that, yeah. that pieces, I don't even know what to call it, but it pieces the stuff together and it creates the, gives you the best results 
Well, we possible. called it we called it triangulation technology based off the process that you you brought to us, right? Yeah. So, um, and yeah, basically, like we've we've got data contracts through through Max's relationships. We were able to go out and create data relationships with all the big phone providers, phone number providers. So we have you know Lexus and TLO and all these companies um, relationships with them. Now we know where they're good. We know what numbers are good from TLO. We know what numbers are good from Lexus, right? And, you know, some of the other data providers that we pull um, phone numbers from. And then also we have our own proprietary methods for also then taking all this aggregated phone number data and coming out with what we think represents the best. And I don't know if I'm talking too much about this, but you literally created something that goes out and searches the entire web in seconds yeah. and matches this data. And like, I don't, and I'm saying in the most simplest form, so I might even be saying it correctly, but you literally, on top of the data that we get, you match it, you scrub the entire internet and you create this, that's where the triangle comes from. That third piece is, yeah. is that proprietary software, that proprietary thing that you created that goes out and all these things yeah together. i mean you 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 sat us down when you taught us about you know um how you would do it and that when you were in the bail bonds business mm -hmm. and um so we just sort of took that process we understood the sources and the way of going about it now the beautiful thing about artificial intelligence is that it continues to learn mm -hmm. so eventually over over a couple of years right after we've been building it it goes out to even more sources so that's why instead of creating a brand new skip tracing company that's why we bought rei skip because it already had a, a year or two of already learning mm -hmm. certain things that we could not just develop. So we came ahead of the curve and we needed that data in order to be able to speed up that process and implement that, that third leg that you created. That's right. Yeah. So that, that that's a simple thing. I think a lot of, a lot of people want to know what skip tracing was. Yeah. It's, 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 it's real simple. And the amount of data you get back is not equal that it's the best data. And yeah. I just want people to know that from up front. It doesn't mean if you don't get a number return, it's because that that's a good thing. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, none of it can be 100 percent perfect. No, it's not. I mean, think about mobile phone numbers. People switch them all, switch the, time. Them all the time. So I have three of them. Exactly. So, you know, <laughs> I mean, there is the reality that is the world mm -hmm. that it's constantly changing and moving. Um, but I think in terms of the uh, the match rate, I don't think you're going to get anything better because we're already going to all the best places and we're running it against our methods mm -hmm. to sort of give you the best list possible. Well, I can't wait to reveal some stuff that we're doing with RA Rail and, and, and RAI Skip in the future and creating some cool stuff. But, you know, I I want to talk more about like 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 you and some some problems you've solved in this business and like things like that and and where you see this business going in the future. Yeah. Um, and because because I don't really have that conversation with many people that because you're a visionary like myself. So you sit down, you observe, you also have the technology side, but you're like, OK, here's some things I see right now. And then here's where I see where the, where the business going. And this is not even like a prep question, not that I prep any of my questions, but what, like, what are some things that you fixed in the past? And you don't have to name anybody you fix them with or anything like that. And then where do you see this business going? Um, data definitely being kind of like at the center of everything. Mm -hmm. uh, you find like a lot of the larger wholesale shops that are doing like huge numbers, mm -hmm. you know, like million dollar months. They yeah, all have million dollars months, people. Yeah. yeah, like one shop that I was at, you know, they definitely had million dollar months. Wholesaling. Um, wholesaling. Yeah, just wholesaling. 100% wholesale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. And so it's possible. I mean, um, and, it, and it was mostly data, right? But then there's also a sales side to it too, mm -hmm. um, and understanding the psychology of people. So that's one of the things with me, like I just don't focus on data. I also focus on like just the human, like neuroscience and what makes people respond and what are they feeling and how do you, how do you appeal to that? Mm -hmm. So we, that even goes into how the, the messages that we create in our RVMs, mm -hmm. right? So, that's important. Right, that's really important. Um, so yeah, I mean, Data, I think, is, is central. And a lot of these larger shops are now, you'll see that they're actually hiring data scientists. Why do you think I got one on my team? There you go. Yeah. Because you got to see you got to see that trend. It's it's important. It's it's I think it's I think it's more important than well, I wouldn't say more important, but I think it's just as equally as important as my sales team is to make sure that they are getting in front of the right people. I think I think it's one ecosystem that they all have to work together. Mm -hmm. Right. Because there's always going to be a human component. You're always going to end up in the end picking up the phone, talking to somebody. Mm -hmm. And how prepared are you for that phone call? 
how fast did it take you to get to that person in the first place? How much yep. time did you waste? You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And so data is what kind of helps improve all these things. But in the end, it's a human mm -hmm. interaction that has to happen. So the fast, and, your, yeah. and your data, the when you've triangulated and done all the things, it, it even helps with like like mailing. Like you're getting to better addresses doing that. Oh, yeah. Too. I mean, and, and, and you know this. I mean, like I, I love REM and I love, you know, and a lot of people look at R REI Real as an RVM service. Way more than that. But it's, yeah, it really was designed to also handle Bandit, you know, sign campaigns, mm -hmm. direct mail campaigns. I use that too. Right? Because, you know, once you start getting to a higher level of the game, you really want to go out and maybe do some direct mail. So let's let's talk about that because I, I, I do talk about REI Rails being an RVM machine, but it's way more than just that. That It does way more because you will essentially create phone numbers that you put on campaign pieces or things, right? So you can create a bandit sign with a number that is linked to your REI Rail account and and it's going to give you data that, that you didn't have before, right? right. Mm -hmm. and, then pro and then and not only that, if you uh, send out mail pieces and you upload that same list, you're going to, when the call comes back, you're going to get a way more intelligent conversation. Yes. So it's not just the RVM side. Like literally if you're spending money, anybody that's spending money in mail. And I know guys like Scott Ood spending $30,000 a month plus on mail, upload that same list yes. to yeah. REI rail. Yeah. And when those people call you back, yeah. You're going to get that information. You're going to have a more intelligent conversation with that person. Absolutely. Right off the bat. Yeah. Absolutely. And the other thing too is after two weeks, say you haven't heard from, you know, haven't heard from people in your list. They haven't called back. REIRA will tell you who hasn't called back. Rehash. Now you can go rehash them and do an <laughs> RVM and say, Hey, I sent you a mail two weeks ago and you know, just want to make sure you got it and have that conversation. So that's next level stuff. That's yeah. so, so, so basically what he's saying is you're sending mail out, you're skip tracing these individuals and you're all, you're sending them a mail piece. And then you know who you did not get a call back because the REI Rail tracks who mm -hmm. did not call you from that campaign. You click rehash. It takes the people that did not call you back and you send those particular people a voicemail that says, hey, look, I'm such and such. I sent you a mail piece about two weeks ago about your house. Did you get it? I wonder if I got the right address or not. Give me a call back. I'd love to talk to you about it. Yeah. And that is a second touch. And you can actually, it, it works because it's a double edged. Yeah. It, it, and then. I mean, the biggest shops touch their list seven, eight times. And not from the same thing. Not it's from not the same just, thing. Yeah, it's yeah. not just calling. It's so, not just mail. Exactly. It might be a little bit of cold calling. You know, maybe the first touch was mail. Mm -hmm. Then there was RVM. Then there was a cold call after that. Mm -hmm. And then they have a, a follow-up nurturing postcard that follows that. Yeah. So, yeah, multiple touches. So that's that's cool, man. So what do you think about the future of of this business and this thing? Where, where do you see it? And this doesn't have, there's no right or wrong answer. Where do, where do you see this going? I think wholesaling is always going to be around. I think it's going to have, you know, highs and lows. I think we're in a high right now. Mm -hmm. I think a low will probably come in maybe a couple how, of years. How do people survive that? Um, by basically, you know, being able to do other things. Because when wholesaling is, is not good, then you can kind of switch to flipping. Mm -hmm. You know, because there's always going to be a market. If you're buying below market, mm -hmm. you always can sell, yeah. right? So so if you, what, if, what, what about developing a true, true, true buyer, cash buyers list? And you say when the market starts to go down and when it finds its bottom, those guys come out. So you're Absolutely. still solving problems. You're still solving problems. But Absolutely. Because the smartest buyers obviously wait. You know, yeah, they wait and they're going to buy when the market's low. So you can still solve problems. Things are just going to be lower priced and assignments might be lower and deals might be. It might be a little lower, but as long as you're diversifying, you know, and you can maybe throw a flip in there here and there, if that's, you know, what you want to do, you're always going to be able to make money in this space. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So question that's not related to real estate. If you were not doing real estate, if you're not developing software or anything, what is it that you would do besides any of this? Professionally or anything? Personally? I don't know. <laughs> uh, I used to be in music, so maybe I'd be producing music to some degree. Like R. Kelly? Or not I don't know. You know what I probably, you know what I really would be doing? What's that? I, I would, I would always be doing some form of marketing. Some like part I love, of it. I, yeah. I, I love direct response. I love copywriting. Mm -hmm. I probably just focus on writing direct response, you know, mails. Something I'm terrible at. That's why I don't, <laughs> that's why you guys will never really, really see emails from me. Yeah. I just, I, <laughs> yeah, I love the idea of it. And uh, so, yeah. So I know you're really not on social that much. I plan to change that for you. Um, the post, the picture you posted. I got with some wonderful pictures on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, you go check that. He took a picture with Gary Vee the other day and cropped his entire head out of the photo. So you just see Gary and Vince and then 
and then Justin's neck. <laughs> well, and I am chest. six five, right? <laughs> Well, you can still make the, the guy could probably build an Instagram in a week, but he don't know how to post to it. <laughs> so, look, man, where can people get a hold of you? I know you're just now getting Instagram started. Yeah, I'm going to get on Instagram. Max has really uh, kind of got me motivated to get on Instagram, but uh, you can definitely find me there at uh, Justin Knows REI. Okay. So that's Justin Knows, K N O W S R E I. Um, and, and he also, does. He actually does. Yeah, and the, you can find me on uh, Facebook. And obviously, if you uh, interest, if you're interested in REI Rail, you can, you know, reach the uh, REI Rail Facebook group and reach me through that as well. Yeah, and what's the, the REIRail.com? And we got great customer support. I mean, before people even sign up, they can get a demo, can't they? Absolutely, a full demo, so they see what's going on and they see the whole thing. And it's crazy. And and uh, one of the things that we are bringing over to REI Skip that we've had in REI Rail for a while is literally your skip tracing takes five minutes. Yeah, it just takes minutes. I don't even care what number it is of yeah. things you're skipping. Just one point about the skip tracing just quickly is like the difference between what we're doing with REI skip and um, versus a lot of the other companies is everyone's buying data, mm -hmm. right? And most of the large, most of the companies, the competitors, they're really and not to say anything bad about them, but most of them are just buying from one single source, mm -hmm. right? Whereas we're like, we want to give you the full spectrum. So we're buying from all the sources plus our own stuff to kind of give you the best picture of that person. Yeah. So it costs us a little bit more, but we're giving you the best that's out there. Yeah. You, you just can't touch it. Mm -hmm. Michael Jackson can't touch it. Did he say <laughs> can't touch it? Can't beat it. Yeah. MC, MC, Hammer. MC Hammer. Sorry. <laughs> totally different guy. His cousin, his cousin, MC Hammer said, said that. So you guys make sure you reach out to Justin. Appreciate you being on here. Um, dude, you're going to be seeing a lot more of this guy. Cause I'm going to be, sharing a lot more secrets this year as we promised that we're going to be doing a lot more videos and talking about a lot more things in detail and how to scale your company um vince and i have been working on some things called the pod sessions i cannot wait for you guys to <laughs> hear that crazy it's uh it's it's a wonderfully produced podcast where we go with we sit down with the rei rail user review a real phone call and dissect it like you dissected a frog in high school yeah. and literally show you from end to end. And these podcasts that we've got so far are freaking amazing. So I can't wait to release those uh, here shortly. But as usual, guys, I really appreciate you uh, listening to this podcast, whether you're on YouTube, whether you're on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for watching. And uh, we did just recently reach 100,000 subscribers on uh, YouTube. I think I'm the first wholesaler to do that. <laughs> I think. Um, but I'm waiting on my plaque from YouTube, so I need to hurry up because I, I want that thing on my wall. I, I don't even know why it's so important to me. But um, I appreciate every so I couldn't do it without everybody. And, um, man, podcast is, is rising. I plan to give you better podcasts, more podcasts. And um, J-Rock and Dave are working hard to make sure you get a video every single day of the week. So I appreciate you guys. Subscribe, like, share this with a friend. And uh, I'll see you on the other side. Peace. Thank you for listening to the Wholesaling Houses Elite Podcast with Max Maxwell. Make sure to tune in next week to see what elite wholesaler will have in the hot seat.